Hey everyone, we're at the Worldwide Corals Farm here at the Orlando Superstore. And a lot of people have been asking, what happened to the old farm? And for a long time, we couldn't really tell you what happened to it, but today we're gonna to show you. And it's a secret project with SeaWorld, partners like Disney, the AZA, NOAA, Fish and Wildlife, and they're on a mission to save the corals from the Keys and the surrounding areas. Hey everybody, this is Justin Zimmerman. I'm an aquarist here at the Florida Coral Rescue Center. Um, this center used to be owned by Worldwide Corals and is now our FCRC, Florida Coral Rescue Center. In 2019, American Zoological Association, AZA, reached out to us and other partner institutions and asked us to come and help save these corals. And what we were able to do is to form a partnership and go out into the wild, collect these corals through NOAA and Fish and Wildlife, and bring them into captivity at SeaWorld. And these corals were collected because of a disease called stony coral tissue loss disease. What happens is if they get the disease, they go through a tissue necrosis. It's a white line that actually moves across the corals. So some of the issues that may be causing the problems in the Keys that are affecting these corals are things like warming ocean temperatures. The temperatures in the Keys have been getting warmer almost year after year. Um, there's also issues with runoff, runoff through the Everglades that comes down in the form of nitrate and phosphate. Um, that potentially can cause algae blooms and, uh, and sedimentation that could be hurting these corals. They have also had past issues with septic tank issues. In the old days, the septic tanks would either leak into the reefs. Um, so these are all issues that could be causing the, the stony coral tissue loss disease. Here in our care, they're genetically safe, where we can keep them isolated. Um, and we know that once a disease passes through, we'll hopefully reproduce these corals sexually and asexually and put them back into the wild. We acquired this facility in 2020 from Worldwide Corals. Um, since we purchased it, we have had to do some upgrades. We made some changes to the electricity, and we've also painted the building. But the original technology, such as the lights, the vortex, and all the uh, life support systems were basically left intact. Um, we're very happy with the life support on the systems right now. We're currently running, you can see the Ecotech Radions, uh, Ecotech Vortex. We have Coral View uh, Reef Octopus Skimmers, Neptune Monitoring. The, the life support has been top notch, been doing really well for us and keeping the corals, most importantly, very, very healthy. You can tell by the growth of the corals. A lot of the corals, when they came in, they average about six to eight inches across. They've definitely been growing. They've been outgrowing the, the tiles that they were brought in on. Uh, my name's Jelani. I'm an aquarist at SeaWorld that works here at the Florida Coral Rescue Center. Uh, every day we come in at 6 a.m. and we begin our day with feeding one of the systems of the corals, uh, which then we typically also will make sure to get some chemistries run just to make sure all of our water quality is right where it needs to be and we'll make adjustments if necessary. We have 753 colonies um, right here. So divided up between the 18 different species um, that we currently hold, there's different numbers for each ones. Uh, some of them are, have been like little fragments of other corals or like gemmas. Um, we're not cutting them on purpose like you guys do. Um, but we do get some of them kind of butt off or uh, clones of themselves and they'll get to a point where we are able to cut them off and put them on their own tile. And then from that point, after they have survived a certain amount of time, they're able to be counted as their own individual. And then we also have to do assessments on our corals where we pick them up and look at them We'll take pictures and make notes on anything on their conditions. And then we also will measure them just to track their progress and growth. So that way we know how much space they could take up and if it comes to sending corals to other institutions within the project, we know what corals are of a shippable size and what they're able to take on their space limitations. Here at the FCRC, there is a high level of biosecurity with our corals. All the corals that have come to us from the Florida Keys have all been collected in front of the disease lines. So we're pretty confident that these corals do not have the stony coral tissue loss disease. Even then, we still give them a 30-day quarantine period to make sure that there is no other, other diseases, parasites, anything else that could potentially come in. Once they're here with us, we know they're safe and healthy. Any additional inverts, um, things like snails, urchins, crabs, that are collected from the Keys have to go through an additional 30-day quarantine to make sure that they have been safe from the disease and we're not transferring any water. We also don't want to introduce any parasites from, say, the Indo-Pacific. Um, all you guys are probably hobbyists listening to this, so you probably know there's a lot of different coral parasites, there's a lot of invasive species, things that get in your tank. We don't want to introduce the, any of those in here with our corals because 
we know these corals or their offspring are going to go back into the Keys, and that would be the last thing we'd want to do is to introduce any invasive or um, exotic animals back into the Keys with these corals. We at the FCRC use Instant Ocean as a reef salt, and we go through almost a pallet, which is 40 boxes uh, a month of 200 gallon boxes of Instant Ocean. We have a giant 3,000 gallon per day RO unit that we use to, to make this the water for the Instant Ocean. And we hold about 7,000 gallons of synthetic seawater, so the whole entire facility is around 7,000 gallons. We like to keep our 100 Ecotech Radion lights as close to possible as natural conditions to simulate what they would, the corals would be experiencing um, if they were still in the ocean. Our current PAR readings for most of these, these corals are about 150 PAR, and if you're a hobbyist in the aquarium, you know this is pretty, pretty low lighting. Um, this is, that's because most of the corals in our care have been collected around 50 to 60 feet of water, and at that depth, the, the lighting for the corals really isn't that intense. So we found that the corals thrive at this, this PAR. For some of the species, it may be even a little less. Uh, we also found around 14K for our color temperature is right at the sweet spot. So some of the corals that may be shallower would have a lower Kelvin temperature, and the corals that were deeper would have a little high, a higher Kelvin temperature. And we've actually seen some of the corals have, have changed in color since we've got them from the wild. A lot of the corals, when they're collected, came in kind of a brown mocha, kind of a coffee color. And some of the corals that we've kept since then have, have changed to more of a green, purple. Um, we're not sure what that, what's that is, if that means they're healthier, they're thriving, or if it's just a, ch a change in the uh, zooxanthellae and the pigment in the coral tissue. Okay, I'd like to thank you guys for coming out here to the FCRC, joining myself, my staff, seeing our awesome corals that are, that are basically you can't see anywhere else in the world. Um, I'd like to invite you back so you can come visit us in another six months or year, see them again. Hopefully they've grown, hopefully they've reproduced, we have some babies. And until then, just keep reefing, guys. Um, said from one reef keeper to another, um, this, the, what we are doing here is no different than what you guys are doing in the hobby. It's the same technology, it's the same equipment. Um, in fact, I want to say that the things that you guys have tested out there, these lights, these filters, these methods are all the same methods that we use here. So we're building our, our technology, our research on what you guys are doing in the hobby. So keep it up, um, keep doing what you're doing, and just keep reefing, guys. This is great. I'm glad you guys were able to come out here and see this.